Joining us on the line is Eitan Mayer. He is a resident of Lod. Lod is a city that is located very close to Tel Aviv. It is a mixed Arab Jewish city, about 70% Jewish, 30% Arab. One of the great untold stories during this latest conflagration is the is the uptick in riots. There's a massive riot in Lod that basically led to the intervention of the national government. Eitan was there. Eitan, thanks so much for joining the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, so why don't you give us the situation on the ground in Lod today? How did this get started? Where, where do things stand right now? Basically, it's pretty much a war zone here in Lod. It happened three days ago. We had mobs of hundreds and hundreds of uh, Arab terrorists, and I think terrorists is the correct word for I don't think they're anything other than terrorists. And they just started launching a violent program against the Jewish population of the city, started attacking Jews, burning down synagogues, burning down schools, burning dozens and dozens of cars, smashing Jewish businesses, waving Hamas flags, waving flags of the Palestine Liberation Organization. And uh, that's the situation we have today. And uh, just to understand, these aren't people from a faraway city or a different neighborhood. These are people that live right next to us. These are our neighbors. When I go and I have to get uh, a carton of milk, when I have to go send something to the post office, I walk two minutes away from my house to the Arab neighborhood. And if I would go there during the riots, they would murder me. It's not an exaggeration. You can look at the footage there's on social media, widespread footage of these riots, and you see the blood and the murder in their eyes. In my community, unfortunately, the police, uh, God bless them, we love the police. They haven't been effective. They haven't been able to call the riots. So my community set up a community watch. Those of us who have guns are there with guns on the perimeter of the community. Those who don't have bats, and we have lookouts from all the buildings, and we see with binoculars the Arab groups of the terrorists congregating outside the perimeter of the community, and they have blood and murder in their eyes. And one of the saddest parts about this whole thing is that the Arab community, we know that there are people in the Arab community, especially those that want peace, but they are silent. They are not having their voices being heard. And the Arab government, the MKs, the members of Knesset, of Israeli parliament, the Arab members of Knesset, they are silent. They are not going out and saying, guys, stop this madness, stop this violence. And that's really the, I think the big difference between the, I would say our side and their side is that there are rare acts of Jewish violence, and uh, it happened occasionally. The Jews come out and condemn it unequivocally. Last night, something happened that made the media, they were ecstatic. Why? Because an Arab man, unfortunately, was beaten by Jewish radicals, a disgusting act. And now what they could do now is they play the footage because it was caught on camera, and they have all the media says clashes between Jews and Arabs in all these mixed cities. They say radical Arab extremists, Jewish extremists are crashing. They try to draw an equivalence between what's going on. This is completely false, and this is something that everyone has to know. 99.9% .9 of the violence is perpetrated by these Arab terrorists. The 0.1% of the violence that is perpetrated by these Jews is condemned by the 99.9% .9 of the rest of the Jewish population, and that's really the difference between us. It's important for everyone to understand. So uh, until the last three days, what were relations like in Lod between the Jews and the Arabs? It was the, the, It's kind of rare Lod in the sense that many of the cities in Israel are sort of almost solely Jewish or almost solely Arab. There are a few that are different, obviously. If you look at Akko, if you look at Yaffa, uh, th those are those are cities that, that tend to be more mixed. Lod is one of the mixed cities. So what were relations like before this? They were great. Like I said, we were going out to their neighborhoods. They were coming to ours. Everything was fine. I just told my wife two weeks ago, I found this amazing hard hardware store in the Arab community, five minute walk away. I was thrilled. I'm like, oh, great. I could buy all my tools there. And now there's no chance we're going back there, at least in the near future. If something happened, you know, they, they say how it's surrounding Jerusalem, Al-Aqsa. I don't know how burning an elementary school has to do with Jerusalem. I don't know by trying to murder Jews. Or last night they shot a pregnant woman. Thank God the baby was, was delivered today successfully. She is now in serious condition. Today they stabbed a Jew going to a synagogue. I have no idea what burning down elementary schools and stabbing innocent women and shooting people have to do with Jerusalem. That's just me. I show my affection in a different way. And so when, when you look at the, the population of Lod, obviously it's about 30% Arab. There are about 75,000 people who live in Lod. You said that there are several hundred you know, Arab rioters or terrorists. Uh, who are perpetrating the violence. What is the breakdown in terms of the, the Israeli Arab population? Is the, the, I assume that the people who are participating in the violence are, like most people who participate in violence everywhere, young men. Um, so is, is that correct? That's correct. The young ones are leading the violence, but it's not only them. They're joined by also by everyone else. It's really the entire population. Obviously, the women don't, in this situation, aren't engaged in the violence. But of course, there's all the hotheads that are, that are leading sort of the charge, but it's not only them. Like I said, we have really lookouts on my community, making sure they don't come in. Because we know, by the way, if we don't have these lookouts, if we don't have people standing there armed, that they will come in, they will break that into our buildings, and they will murder our, us, our, our wives, and our children. And again, this is not an exaggeration. Go look at the footage. It's all over social media. So yes, while we do have the youth leading the charge, they are joined by other people. We see them as well. We have people reporting all the time. And we see people also in their 50s and their 60s. I have no idea why they don't have anything better to do with their lives except for trying to murder Jews. But that's the situation. So meanwhile, uh, the rocket fire continues. Obviously, uh, Tel Aviv has been put under repeated assault by the by these rockets, and now Hamas is firing off 
uh, what they're calling suicide drones, which are just drones that are rigged with explosives. Um, so uh, apparently the latest in Israel is that they're talking about calling up ground forces and doing some sort of ground invasion into Gaza. It seems like that's an eventuality at this point. It seems so. There are talks about uh, brokering a peace that Egypt was going to broker a ceasefire. The Israeli government said it's not happening. And I can the way that the, the, citizens, the citizens of Israel feel is that, that enough is enough. We've been bombarded time and time again by rockets. And what happens is there's an escalation a few days, things calm down, and then the same thing happens again. You have around probably a quarter of Israel's population who are growing, these kids are growing up and they're gonna have some serious PTSD and we already know what they do. They're living under rocket fire. Even here in Lod, right, we're in center Israel, during all these riots, during all the, <laughs> the Arab mobs were coming to try to, to murder the Jews and break into their homes, there were sirens still in the air. And unfortunately, someone that was killed in Lod was an Arab man and his daughter. So obviously Hamas doesn't differentiate between uh, who they shoot. They also shot at Jerusalem, right? They claim Jerusalem is so holy to them, but again, then they shot at the city they claim is uh, very holy to them. So uh, yeah, it seems that it's inevitable. Uh, Eitan Meir, he lives in Lod. Uh, thanks for the report from On the Ground and stay safe. Thank you very much.